Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Today we're going to do a quick update guide for Neither SX2. This is a PlayStation 2 emulator available for Android. Now this app has a long and storied past. Essentially, it starts with an app called Aether SX2. And this app was the Android port of another PlayStation 2 emulator you've probably heard of before called PC SX2. Essentially, the developer abandoned the project, and unfortunately, even though they had planned on making it open source, they did not. And so for a while, we were kind of left with just some of these older versions of Aether SX2, and they weren't the best. In fact, the latest update introduced ads. And so that's the one that most people found on the Google Play Store. Now to add another layer to this story, Aether SX2 was removed from the Play Store a couple days ago. And so a lot of people were wondering how are they going to be able to play PlayStation 2 games on their Android devices. Thankfully, there is a silver lining to this, and I think it's a great opportunity to talk about another fork of Aether SX2 called Neither SX2. And this one's a community-based update of this app, which introduced a lot of nice patches that improve the user experience. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own version of this Neither SX2 app. It is super simple. All you really need is a Windows computer. After that, you'll be able to install it on any Android device and be able to play your PlayStation 2 games on the go. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first thing, this is gonna be a very simple tutorial, so I'll have direct links to the GitHub pages that I'll be referencing in my video description. And of note, there are actually two versions of Neither SX2. There's one called Neither SX2 Patch, and there's another one called Neither SX2 Classic. And these are both based on two different builds of the original Aether SX2. For the most part, I would recommend using the Neither SX2 patch version. This one has been continuously updated, and it's based on the latest release of Aether SX2 called version 4248. And I think across the board, the quality of life improvements on this patch version is probably better than the other one, but there is still merit to using the classic version because this one's built on an older version of Aether SX2 where certain games play better for some reason. The main example for this is going to be Sly Cooper. If you specifically want to play this game and you're not using a super high powered device, then Neither SX2 Classic might be the best fit for you. Either way, I'm going to show you how to install both of these in this video. I would recommend starting with the patched version, and then if a certain game is not working the way you want, then try the classic one instead. And one last thing of note before we get started is unfortunately you cannot install both of these apps at the same time on the same device. So you will have to uninstall one in order to install the other to check which one is going to work best for the games you want to play. I realize that's kind of a pain in the butt, but unfortunately that is just how it goes. Anyway, we're going to install both of these, so we'll start with the Neither SX2 patch version. We're going to go to that GitHub page, and then on the right side you will see a link to releases. From there, find the most recent release. It'll be up top. As of making this video, it's version 1.8. From there, just scroll down until you find a bunch of links, and then find the one that's called builder.zip. From there, just click on it to download it onto your PC. Next, we're going to do the same thing with the classic version. So we're going to go to the releases page, and then we'll find the most recent release and look for the one that says Neither SX2 Classic.zip. Again, we're going to click on that link and then download it. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you're going to need a Windows PC to run this script, but that's not really the whole truth. If you are comfortable with running sh commands in Linux, you can do that as well. And if you're an advanced Android user, you can also patch this using a terminal app on an Android phone. We're going to keep it simple in this video by focusing on the Windows version, but if you don't have a Windows PC, I would recommend going over to a friend's house. It's only going to take a minute to build this, and you probably haven't seen that friend in a while, so it's probably good to catch up with them and see how they're doing. Anyway, once you have these two files downloaded, we're going to go ahead and unzip them. I'm going to use 7-zip, which means I'm just going to double click on them and then drag the folder over onto my desktop. But of course, you can use your preferred unzipping app. We're going to start with the patch builder first, so we're going to open up that builder folder. And within here, you will find a batch file. It's going to say build neither sx2.bat. And all you have to do is just double click on this file. From there, it's going to download the latest version of Aether SX2 and then patch it with Neither SX2. And again, it'll only take a moment to do this. After that, when you go back into the main folder, you will see that there are two new folders, Original APK and Patched APK. If we go into that Patched APK, we will see our new version of Neither SX2. I'd recommend renaming it to Neither SX2 so that way you know which one it is. And you can tell it's the most recent version of Aether SX2 because it says 4248. Anyway, once we have that APK file, we can actually put it into our main Neither SX2 folder, and we can get rid of those two builder files. We're not going to need them again. Now let's do the same thing, but with the classic version of Neither SX2. For this, we're going to open it up and then run that batch file again. Now this one does need an additional app installed on your computer called a JDK or Java Development Kit. And if you don't have that already installed on your device, when you try to run this batch file, it'll let you know. 
So if you do get this error, just copy the URL that you find within this window, and then you can press any other key to close this window out. After that, paste the URL into your web browser, and then that'll take you directly to this website. And here I'm gonna click on the link for x64 installer. After you've downloaded that, just go ahead and run the executable file, and it'll take a minute, it'll ask for some permissions, and then it'll install this development kit. And once it's run through that installation process, you'll be good to go. You can close out of it and then run that batch file again. After that, it's gonna do the exact same thing it did with the previous batch file. It's gonna download a version of AetherSX2 and then patch it with all the new fixes. Now, once it's done, you will see that there are a couple different APK files in this main folder. The one we want is the one that has the word patched within the name. Again, I would recommend renaming this to add the word NetherSX2, and you can again see this is the classic version because it says 3668. And there we go, we now have our two APK files for NetherSX2, depending on which one you want to install onto your devices. From there, I'm just going to take the SD card of my Retroid Pocket 4 Pro, and I'm going to drag and drop these two APKs onto there. Now we're ready to actually install one of these onto a device. So here I am on my Retroid Pocket 4 Pro, I've put the SD card back inside, and now I'm going to go into the Files app and then navigate to my SD card. I put them in a folder called apps and you can see them right here. Now, like I mentioned, you know, we have two different versions and some games might work better with others. And I've never really found one to be completely better than the other. It really depends on the games you're going to be playing. For this video, I'm going to use the version 4248, so the most recent patched version. And to install it super easy, we're just going to click on the APK. It's going to ask, do we really want to install it? And we're going to tap on, yeah, man, I want to do it. Once it's installed, let's go ahead and open up the app. I'm going to show you just some really quick things to get started up. And I go into detail with my other setup guides, I'll leave one link down below. Either way, what I recommend doing is once you get to the settings tab is scroll down to the bottom. And then depending on your device, I would probably say you want to change the GPU renderer to Vulkan. And then you can also adjust your global upscale. Here I'm going to change it to a 2x native because that seems to work the best with the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. After that, it's going to ask you to import your BIOS files. Now these are copyrighted, so you have to find them on your own. But I've already put them on my SD card, so I'm going to navigate to where I have them located on my card. And the ones I'm using are these right here, SCPH 70012. In general, these files will be in a bin format and about four megabytes altogether. Once we have that imported, we can go to the next tab and here it's gonna ask us to point to our game directory. Now I've already set all this up just because I've been using this previously. So all I'm gonna do is navigate to my ROMs folder, find my PS2 folder and then choose that. And obviously like the BIOS files, you're gonna be on your own to find the PlayStation 2 ROMs. Anyway, once we've pointed to that folder, we can hit yes and your setup will be complete. Once you press the finish button, it's gonna scan through your PS2 folder and identify all of your games. Now, once we have our games list, there are a couple little settings that I would recommend setting up, just your very basics. The first is to go into the menu and then select controller settings. Next, under the touch screen tab, scroll down a bit until you find hide with external controller. For this, I would recommend turning on. That's going to get rid of the on-screen controls. Next, under the controller port 1 tab, I would tap on the automatic mapping button. Here you can choose your device's controller and it'll automatically map those controls. Just bear in mind that they're not going to be perfect with every single device, so I would recommend going and testing a couple buttons and see whether or not the values change when you do assign them. I always find that it's the L2 and R2 buttons that need to be readjusted. And then finally, one other setting you may want to adjust is going to be within the main app settings. Within here in the first general tab, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see a bunch of on-screen display settings. This is where you'll turn on things like the frames per second and the resolution, things like that. So if you want to see the stats while you're playing a game, I would recommend turning some of these on. Now you can tap on your game and it's going to start up and you'll have most of your settings already configured. And so if you're just getting started with Nethress X2, you're basically done. That's all you have to do when you're starting from scratch. However, if you have an older version of Aetherus X2, or maybe you want to import your old save games, it can get a little bit more complicated. So let me walk you through that process. For this example, we're going to use my Surface Duo 2. This one I set up several months ago, so way before the whole Nethress X2 thing even came out. And since then, it is auto-updated, so now I have the Google Play Store version of Aetherus X2 here installed. And you cannot have Aetherus X2 and Nethress X2 installed on the same device, so you have to uninstall this. However, before we do that, I want to export some of my data. To do this, we'll go into the main menu of Aetherus X2, and there's a section called Transfer Data. After you tap on that, it's going to give you an option to export or import the data. We're going to export. Now here you can export it wherever you would like. I'm going to put it in my PlayStation 2 folder. After you select it, it's going to ask for access permissions, and then it'll ask what you want to export, BIOS or memory cards or both. We're going to do both in this example. 
And next, I'm going to close out of the app and then uninstall it. Now, uninstalling apps on Android is usually a very similar process. You will just long press on the app and then choose uninstall. Now, when it prompts you of whether or not to keep your data, you do not want to keep the data. You want to keep this unchecked. In fact, often if you keep this data, you will have issues when you try to reinstall Neatheres X2. Anyway, after you press OK, it's going to uninstall the app. And at this point, I do actually recommend restarting your device just to make sure it's nice and clean. OK, now we're ready to install Neatheres X2. I've already put it on my device just for the sake of brevity. So I'm going to go into my file manager and then I found it in my downloads folder. And installing this app is just like any other. So I'll just click on it. Maybe I'll have some app permissions things I have to grant, and then after that it'll be installed. And setting this up with a previous installation is still pretty easy. So I'm going to go into the settings tab, change the GPU renderer to Vulkan, and then also I'm going to change my upscale to a 3x native on this device because the Surface Duo 2 is pretty powerful. Now under the import BIOS it's a little bit different. We can actually just tap on this and then the exported BIOS that we already made within the PlayStation folder will be right there. So if you'd like you can just import the ones that you already exported. And then of course same thing with the game directory. You'll just point to wherever you have your PlayStation PlayStation 2 games stored on your device. Now, once we have it set up, we're ready to import our save files. This can be either very simple or very complicated. I'll walk you through both options. Now, ideally, you would just go into the main menu and then select transfer data, and then you would choose import and then find your memory cards folder that you exported and then choose use this folder. And if all goes well, it'll say that everything is good to go. However, with all these updates that have been coming from Android lately, there's a bunch of app permissions in getting into this folder. And so chances are you'll get an error like this that will say that no importable files were found. And that's because Android has been locking down write permissions within the Android data folder. Thankfully, this is a pretty easy fix, but you will need a Windows PC. So I hope you're still hanging out over at your friend's house. You're probably still catching up. And if so, you're going to need to use their PC again just for a moment. And that's because the easiest way to paste files into that Android app data folder is actually using a PC. And so let's do that next. We're going to take a USB cable, plug it into a Windows PC, and then plug it into our phone or Android device. Now scroll down from the top menu, you will see a notification that says something about charging the device via USB. Go ahead and tap on that, and then you will see an option under USB preferences that will say use USB 4 and then select file transfer. Now back on your Windows PC, you should see your phone or your Android device showing up within the file manager. It will generally say internal shared storage. That's the one we want to open. And if we go within here, we can find a folder called Android and then data. And if you scroll near the bottom, you'll see one that says XYZ Aetheres X2. Click on that and then go into files. And now you'll see a folder that's called mem cards. And this is where we want to put those memory cards that we exported earlier. You'll actually see two files already in there, but those are just generic files that were put there when you installed the app. So I'm going to open up a second window and then I'm going to navigate back to the internal shared storage of my Android device. Next, I'm going to go into my games and then PlayStation folder. And this is where I exported my memory cards previously. And sure enough, if I open up that mem cards folder that I have here from my export, you can see there are two other memory card files. And that's it. You now want to grab your exported files and then copy them and then paste them over into the mem cards file that's within your Android data folder. And when you do that, it's going to give you an option to copy and replace or not copy copy the files. We're going to choose copy and replace. We have now manually imported our data files so that we have all of our save games from the previous installation of Aetheres X2. So now if I go back to Neatheres X2 and I start up a game that had a save file like Jack and Daxter, you'll now see that I can open up a save game that I had previously. I know it's a bit of a workaround to get this working and unfortunately this is all because of Android's app permissions, but this is the way that I would recommend doing it. Now another great thing about Neatheres X2 is that it works pretty well with most emulation front ends. For example, lately I've been using Emulation Station Desktop Edition a lot, and this one works great with both versions of Neither SX2. Now I've already pre-configured and scraped all of my box art, so when I navigate through this it's going to look really nice and pretty, but this does take a little bit of work to get set up. I'll leave my Emulation Station video linked down below as well. Anyway, as you can see, I can go to my PlayStation 2 section, then choose my game, and then launch it from here. And that's really about it when it comes to setting up Neatherx X2. I think it really shines when you use a front end like this because it kind of brings the whole experience together. So now that I have it set up on my Retroid Pocket 4 Pro, I can navigate through my PlayStation 2 game list. And then once I choose the game, it's going to launch it directly. But then also, depending on the device that you're using, you can also close out of the game and go directly back to the front end as well. The Retroid Pocket 4 Pro UI actually does this really well. So if I press the back button to get into the quick settings and then select exit game, it'll take me right back to emulation station. 
And that's it, we can now navigate to our next game and get back into our retro gaming adventure. Anyway, that's really about it for this video. You know, the removal of Aether SX2 from the Google Play Store kind of prompted this idea because I realized that many people probably use that Play Store version and they're not really sure where to turn. So I do hope this quick guide was helpful in getting you set up with Aether SX2. And it does look like this app is being actively developed. Now, unfortunately, the original developer has still not made Aether SX2 open source. And so as a result, all the updates to Aether SX2 don't really have anything to do with performance, but really just kind of the user elements. Either way, it's great that there are people out there who are working on this, and again, I'll leave all this stuff linked down below. As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.